uh, I'm very much uh, honored and uh, moved also to make this presentation. I had several uh, options to, for the talk, and uh, the suggestion was to talk about the last item, unclosed and facade fires. And uh, I'm very glad to, be, to have this opportunity to make uh, uh, this talk here. I'm also very grateful to have known uh, Professor Howard Demons and uh, Phil Thomas and uh, have uh, the opportunity to have discussions with them and benefit from this uh, uh, interaction. And I want to point out that several parts of the work I'm presenting is based on uh, their contribution to the field. My objective also in this talk is to motivate the young people and the new scientists to critically challenge several areas in fire. They need refinement, uh, they need uh, new thinking, uh, don't accept exactly what uh, exists in the literature. Uh, and I also apologize that I will not mention a lot of people who uh, have worked in this area. With all this uh, background now, I can uh, proceed with uh, an outline of the talk, the essentially two parts uh, connected, as you will see. And uh, one is the enclosure files. I will uh, discuss not everything, but uh, the things uh, I have worked and uh, mostly related to underventilated files. Or, and uh, I will discuss some issues with geometry and openings. And also, what is the source fire, if it's liquid or gaseous? or uh, solid and location, but there are a lot of uh, issues there. Uh, what is the burning rate inside the enclosure? And uh, what is the mass pyrolysis rate inside the enclosure? Which is the last one. In uh, the context, this area is very important, as you know, for the design of fire-safe buildings, including the facades. You can have a fire in an uh, enclosure, Does not work? Oh, here. Okay, sorry. Here we are. Okay, in the enclosure, and the, if the, when the window breaks, if it breaks, the flames can go out, and uh, the fire can propagate to, to, the, to the next floor. Uh, and uh, uh, the conditions in the room uh, can be Underventilated, the uh, left hand side, or overventilated. It's, uh, usually it means that the, over uh, the underventilated case is more serious. And uh, it's very important to distinguish these two, two cases when you design for, for, for a building. Uh, this, I, I show you the practical situation of uh, floor and spandrel and the wall. And uh, this is a very big issue. Uh, uh, for the design also of test methods for facade systems. Now, we did a lot of work uh, to, to find out uh, uh, what are the effects of geometry and location of the fire. We used uh, a small scale, 50 centimeter by 50 centimeter boxes, which uh, are shown here, three, three are shown here. And uh, we have also a facade, uh, which had a lot of uh, steel plate gauges, which is uh, to measure the heat fluxes. Uh, and uh, we had uh, several openings. And we measure the flame heights with a CCD camera to uh, determine the uh, mean flame height. We, we, we uh, see just I have a sketch to show uh, different geometries, one box, two boxes, and the location of the fire. We didn't examine all kinds of geometries. But uh, this uh, was in order to see what the effect will be on, on uh, the facade fire and uh, on the conditions of the fire inside the enclosure. We concentrated on underventilated fires, not enough uh, air to, to burn the fuel. And uh, we used gas burners in order to have uh, control heat release rate. So all this. Uh, uh, the uh, work we've done. This is a more a sketch of uh, the measurement uh, uh, we did, including uh, the CCD camera and the heat flux gauge and the, the uh, one of the boxes. 
And you can see also uh, the flames here inside the box. And they were not only near the surface, they, were, they seemed to be all over. This, I, I said, I will lim we limited, uh, we concentrated mostly on underventilated fires, but we did also overventilated. This is uh, uh, also, we did uh, extend the geometry to six boxes, like a corridor or a tunnel fire. And in all the experiments, we collected the gases in a hood. So we, don't, we didn't only control the fuel uh, supply rate, we measured also the heat release rate. And this proved very important in the work we did. Here also, we saw some flames coming out. And now I, I will try to explain some of, of the things that uh, occur in uh, uh, unclosed fires. So uh, this is a well-established uh, conceptually or uh, um, qualitatively. Uh, if uh, uh, the opening uh, factor, which is this uh, area of the opening times the height to the square root of 2, compared to the uh, fuel uh, surface area is large, it's like an open fire, uh, then uh, the, the heat release rate is constant. Then as uh, the opening uh, uh, decreases, the radiation from the hot layer makes the heat release rate go up. But then after uh, uh, additional decrease on the opening rate, the fire becomes underventilated, and the uh, mass load rate be behaves uh, this way. It's uh, linear with respect to this ratio. Now this, uh, I didn't put uh, dimensionless parameters, but uh, uh, the uh, opening uh, factor is related to the flow inside. And uh, the, the area of uh, the fuel can be made dimensionless with a heat release rate divided by the heat of pyrolysis. But it's not necessary for the discussion uh, I'm talking today. So what one result that uh, I want to point out is that uh, this uh, uh, pyrolysis uh, rate uh, of the fuel, we're talking now about uh, fuel, uh, not uh, gaseous burners. Uh, it seems that uh, this, uh, Kavagoy established that, and a lot of measurements uh, point that out, and uh, that this, this point one is the same, independent of the fuel, as long as the conditions are underventilated. Uh, dependent of the fuel means dependent of the heat of pyrolysis of the fuel, or, uh, or its radiation properties. It, uh, it's something that, uh, that uh, uh, I w wanted to, to think about. Uh, for uh, underventilated conditions, the, it is uh, not difficult to find that this is the mass uh, of air that comes in. Uh, uh, and if you want to make some correction about the supply of the fuel, we, we did that. Uh, there is a term like, like that. So uh, we, we were puzzled for a long time with that. Now, this is some experiments which show that this ratio, for example, uh, for underventilated conditions uh, is uh, uh, independent of the fuel. And uh, uh, the, the, the rest of the curves correspond to uh, um, overventilated conditions until you have open fire conditions. So this uh, was uh, supporting this uh, statement, uh, this uh, relation. And uh, what we did now with the, our experiment, something that we didn't uh, uh, plan to to, 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 to do, to find out, is that if you use a gaseous burner and you do increase the heat release rate, the theoretical, the supply of the fuel, until you reach, let's say, 50 kilowatt in a linear way, and you measure the heat release rate in the hood, up to a certain point, this follow each other, and these conditions are overventilated. But at a certain point, where the fuel is uh, supplies much less, much less higher than the heat release rate, and the heat release rate uh, uh, is remain constant. And during this period, until this point, about there is no flames outside. And, and this is uh, something we didn't expect. We did the experiment. We don't know what would happen. And uh, and uh, and this uh, Yik Me Lee did this work. Uh, and this uh, uh, is what happens when the conditions are underventilated. The heat release rate inside the enclosure is constant. And if you 
if you, and then we can do the calculation that uh, uh, we assume that all the air that comes in is consumed, and because the uh, one kilogram of air uh, releases 3,000 kilojoules, the heat release rate is coming at this level. And we did that, you saw how many experiments, and always uh, it proved to be correct. So al although such a, such a, such a relation could be uh, exi could existed, someone said that some people thought that also the, not all the air was burned aside or, or, or something like that, but we, proved, we found out experimentally. And moreover, moreover now, we use this uh, value, the heat release rate, uh, inside the enclosure, and we measure the wall temperature, the gas temperature, and we correlated the gas temperature with uh, the heat uh, released inside the enclosure, and the heat losses to the wall under steady state conditions, this is gaseous balance. This was done by uh, <laughs> Professor Long Hua Hu. And, and, and then we find a good correlation for the gas temperature. And then if, we, if you go to Tibet, the density is 0.66 of the density of the normal area. This coefficient, sorry. Uh, this this, uh, this uh, factor, 1,500, becomes 1,000. And we find, again, without changing any parameters, this correlation. So by measuring also the temperature inside the enclosure, which, uh, which remains constant, we establish that uh, the uh, heat released uh, inside the enclosure for underventilated conditions is equal to the heat released by the oxygen that comes in. And this was... Uh, and we did a, a lot of work to correlate also uh, the gas temperature as a function of time, and here is all Piotr Filo did this work, and we use these uh, relations for the heat release inside the closure to determine these uh, correlations. And I want to conclude now with this. Well, first of all, that the heat release inside the closure for underventilated condition is given by the top term, this 1500, and uh, the other units are in meters. A is the opening area, and A is the height of the opening area. And what we said that the, what burns outside now is the heat that is available for the fuel minus what burns inside, and this is the excess heat release rate. And uh, here, based uh, on, uh, on, the, on the fact that uh, this uh, um, for real fuel now, the, the, the mass by release rate is 0.1 of this uh, uh, opening factor. We find that the excess heat, uh, uh, the release outside the enclosure, is given by this expression. It's very simple algebra because if you divide this by delta HC, you find the stoichiometric ratio. And, uh, and this is puzzling, it's puzzling for me, the, because if the stoichiometric ratio becomes less than five, means that there, is, there are no flames coming out of the enclosure. So I, I, have, I have not done an experiment to show that. And it, it is uh, still possible. So this is something that people can think about and uh, try to see whether it's correct. We, we'll try to, to find out. Also. Now, we also, we also uh, found from this work what is the, the maximum uh, parole rate you can get for fuels. And this maximum, which uh, is at this point, OK? normalized by the area of the fuel, and here normalized the air that goes in, normalized by the area of the fuel and the stoichiometric ratio, is linear with the fuel. Uh, and and, and uh, we're linear with this. this, this lesson is linear. And this is uh, an, important, an important thing we use to see what happens now in corridor fires. And there's another, another uh, item here that is uh, interesting also in corridor fires, or tunnel fires, and I have not seen this discussed. If you have a, a corridor fire, let's say two-dimensional, I mean, this is two-dimensional, then, uh, then uh, there is a, a condition that, uh, that uh, I call it st uh, stable discharge. So the flow may have a hydraulic jump here, but then continues this way. But if the, uh, if the uh, uh, flow rate or you have a fire there, uh, what happens is uh, that uh, the entrainment requirements for this jet are not satisfied or for this buoyant flow, so you have a recirculation zone here. 
And, and, and this is something that uh, we have uh, also noticed in our, our cases in long corridors. But this is something very, I have not seen discussed in fire, and in, uh, it's very, very interesting. And uh, what uh, I, will, I would like to finish this section is by pointing out that using this, this, this uh, expression that the maximum uh, he, uh, parallelism rate is linear with this uh, stoichiometric ratio, uh, we could uh, find based on experiments in uh, corridors that uh, the relation, the relation of uh, the mass parallelism rate of liquid fuels uh, with respect to the opening factor is not 0.1 as it is in a rectangular closures, but it's much less, 0 0.025. And this is something also I leave it uh, for people to, to challenge it and uh, think about. And the uh, explanation, the qualitative I have is uh, in the picture I saw in the previous slide that, uh, that uh, conditions are developed that you have uh, as a, a, a call here unstable discharge. So I conclude now that, uh, that for uh, rectangular type enclosures, which is, as I said before, one, two, or three boxes, the, 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 the pyrolysis rate, the fuel that pyrolyzes, not that burns inside, the fuel that burns inside is the uh, air that comes in divided by the stoichiometric ratio, is given by, by this top expression. For corridors is this, and the excess pyrolysis rate is, the, is this relation, which again emphasizes that if the stoichiometric relation is less than five, there is no uh, fuel comes out, uh, uh, no fuel comes outside. So, uh, and this gives the heat release rates. I mean, I think it's the same. So I will continue now with the second part of uh, my talk. Now, how we use this information uh, to, to 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 find what happens in uh, the flames that come out of the enclosure, and. What bursts out of the enclosure is the excess pyrolysate. Okay, and that's that's what uh, it was something new we used. Because people were using the total heat release rate, but we use here the excess pyrolysate. First of all, we est established some new length scales for the problem related to the facade uh, uh, flames, how the flow goes outside, and uh, we discussed, uh, reviewed the Yokoi's work and uh, determine flame heights and heat fluxes. And we introduce, uh, uh, making this analysis, we introduce two, three length scales, which is kind of uh, all are related to, to the area and the opening factor. And the first uh, length scale uh, is, a, a, is related to the effective flow uh, at the opening. Um, uh, uh, I think uh, it should be L1, the top uh, uh, slide. This should be L1. And L2 is related to how f uh, fast the flames will go out before turning up. And this comes from a uh, uh, comparison of the momentum uh, of, the, of the flow uh, as it comes out of the closure to the buoyancy. And uh, we relate, we use this scale to correlate the data of Yokoi, where uh, the difference here is in the determination of the length scale Yoko used and the scale we use here. And also Yoko used the local, de local density and we use the, the, the ambient density. I, I, I have uh, in the paper how these relations are derived, but I think uh, I have some uh, quick uh, 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 explanation here. And uh, the length scale that Yoko suggested was the square root of the area of the opening and uh, we, we used the less scale, which is related to this parameter. And uh, uh, this is an indication of how we derive this uh, length scales related to the momentum of the jet that comes out from the flow to, with the buoyancy. The, the, uh, the third length scale uh, 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 is arrived when flames also come out. The first two length scales is only flow, convective flow. And this is the conclusion of this work that uh, the, we're using the, these length scales, uh, the correlations make, uh, are better than using the Yoko scale. And at this point now, when I was writing that in September, I found Phil Thomas' work, and uh, I put that as an appendix in the paper before, a long time before 
last week's event. He did something similar, but I don't understand what he did. I tried to read it, <laughs> and I don't understand, so, but it is in his paper, uh, and, uh, and, but, but uh, it's, it's very similar. He questioned your cause relation here. Okay, and, and no one before or after that questioned the relation, and all of people were using, were using this. Oh, now, see, this is basically the background of, uh, of uh, uh, the work uh, we have done. And uh, uh, you, ca you can see that uh, 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 I think there has been a lot of progress in, the, in this way. And I will describe some applications of this uh, uh, physics uh, uh, in the work. Uh, that we have done with uh, 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 Professor Long Kuahu and also Professor uh, Yoshio Miya uh, in Japan. And uh, uh, th this is uh, uh, another puzzle which I will present soon. So here, here is a, 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 it's a very busy uh, slide anyway. I, there is not enough time to explain here everything, but basically, the temperatures uh, were measured here, and with flames coming outside, we, and we determined uh, the, the, the correlation using these length scales, we, the length scale we introduced before, and the excess uh, pyrolysate or the convective. And we can, we can determine uh, what is the temperature uh, along uh, the, the maximum temperature along this uh, wall, including the flame region. So this is uh, what we did uh, with uh, um, um, the USDC, uh, Professor Long Hua Hu. Uh, this is a work uh, uh, which uh, is used to, to determine the flame heights now uh, of the flames that come out of the enclosure. Uh, and uh, you can see, sorry, uh, you can see here, uh, this is the flame height normalized by the length scale, L1. And uh, this is the uh, uh, normalized excess pyrolysate. And you can see we find two, two regions, uh, two thirds and two fifths. This two thirds corresponds to uh, two dimensional conditions. After a certain, the, or the height is large, the flow becomes like three dimensional because there are untrainments from the side and the relation becomes two fifths. And uh, this was also verified for uh, further experiments. Uh, at, uh, at the USTC. And uh, also, uh, one objective of the works, as you saw with the small uh, uh, heat flux uh, gauges, the objective uh, was to measure the heat fluxes. And uh, we use the, sa uh, the same blood scales uh, to find how the uh, flame heat flux changes with height as a, uh, the, uh, as a distance compared to the flame height distance uh, changes along the wall. Uh, so this is, this is the, uh, the uh, heat fluxes. And uh, we did also find, because as you saw, there were a lot of uh, uh, small gauges there. Uh, uh, it's very cheap to, uh, the gauges are very inexpensive to, do, uh, to measure the heat fluxes. And we did uh, this work uh, based on previous work also by John Deris and uh, uh, other people, Elf Guistrom. I mean, these this are all related. Uh, 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 methods, and uh, this we find also the heat flux uh, distribution in the lateral direction uh, on the wall, uh, not only the vertical x, the y direction, and uh, this is the relation we have here. Uh, we extended this work with uh, 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 two parallel walls uh, uh, from the opening. The opening is here. And there is another opposite wall corresponding to, let's say, a building. And uh, we again use the same uh, heat flux gauges. And uh, we found how, how the flame height changes with the separation distance between the walls with this uh, correlation, where we introduced the, the third less scale, which is related to, to how far uh, the flames will go out before they become vertical. And uh, in this case, there are flames that come out. It's not convective flow. And the, I think we uh, uh, obtain uh, good correlations. And uh, the heat flux uh, above the opening on the facade for the cases where you have uh, opposite wall, again, we correlated with uh, 
uh, the same relations using also this uh, relation of the separation distance to this uh, third length scale. Uh, it's, uh, 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 it's important to note that before there was no distinction about uh, uh, length scales, people were using only the Yoko area scale, which was the square root of the area of the opening. Now, uh, we wanted to, to see what, how these uh, things work when you have uh, uh, two, two uh, parallel walls uh, uh, on the opening, and this uh, can represent a real file. Uh, you, you can have uh, all, uh, situations like that. And uh, 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 the, we did that in collaboration with uh, Long Kwa Hu. And you see some buildings uh, there that can have this uh, geometry. And so this is uh, an important geometry. Again, we uh, use the same relations for, for, for the air that comes in and for the uh, heat release rate that burns inside the closure. Instead, in order to understand what this, how this uh, parallel was will affect the flame, the flame height and the, uh, uh, the heat release rate. We collected also the gases, uh, and we wanted to see is the, the, the heat that is released, does the heat that uh, is released in, in, inside the enclosure uh, changes with the separation distance of, of the wall? And you can see here that uh, we have uh, the separation distance 35 centimeter, no wall, 35 centimeters, 75 centimeters, 5 centimeters from the wall. And you can see that the heat, this is uh, the same experiment I described before. We supply the fuel this way, linearly, to maximum 50 kilowatt, and we measure the heat release rate in the hood, and you can see that this, the heat that is released inside the hood does not depend on the separation distance, which is uh, an important thing to use the correlations, the relations we have. And uh, this is, again, a, a complicated side, and the way that Long uh, Kwa uh, likes to do, which is nice. And uh, you can see the experiments, uh, uh, what happens here when you have the side walls. You have entrainment only from one side. Uh, uh, and, and this changed the situation. And we correlated again this uh, using the length scales and the excess heat parallelization. So this is an important thing. You use the length scales related to the flow and what burns outside, or inside the flow. And this is the correlation that includes uh, the effects of the side walls. D is the separation distance of the wall. Also, there the uh, the, the was uh, uh, more experiments related to uh, a facing wall inclined or vertically. And uh, this, again, uh, uh, demonstrates that uh, the, 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 the land scales we have used and the excess parallelization are very important in uh, modeling uh, the, the flames and the heat fluxes outside. Now, uh, we also, we also uh, I mean, uh, USTC has the capability of doing uh, experiments in low pressure without using a low pressure chamber by going to LASA. And uh, we did, uh, we did uh, uh, this uh, experiment with a vertical wall uh, opposite. And uh, in Lhasa and in uh, Hefei. And uh, we, what uh, we, we found is that uh, analyzing the data of, uh, for the temperature uh, along the, uh, the wall, the maximum temperature, is that uh, if, you normalize, if you normalize the flow uh, using the gravity, the effects of density, the entrainment coefficient in Lhasa is less than the entrainment coefficient in normal conditions. Uh, we, we don't understand that. We take into account the de de uh, change in density, but the, the uh, uh, um, uh, entrainment coefficient comes, uh, is less. We, uh, we don't understand that. I, I cannot understand it. And uh, this is uh, something else that uh, uh, people uh, uh, can think about. And uh, 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 this is the, the observation that the effective entrainment rate is a coefficient, actually, not the rate. At low, low pressure is less than in normal pressure. That entrainment rate is dimensional. We don't know why is this so. 
Okay, so this is the, the, uh, another important uh, conclusion of this work. Another application uh, we did is when you have a facade wall with two openings. And here, uh, these are the two openings. And you change the separation distance between the openings. And we wanted to see the merging of the flames. And this shows the two flames separated. As you go, there is interaction. And, there is, and then become one flame when the separation distance between the windows is zero. And, uh, and this is uh, uh, something we uh, did uh, recently. And uh, we were able to use the length scales we described and the flame height uh, to, 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 to correlate uh, the flame height versus uh, uh, the something which is related to the separation distance um, um, between the two windows. So the conclusions uh, from this uh, part of the work is that uh, first, uh, the, 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 this is that. The uh, mass priority rate inside the closure is 0.1 of uh, the, this uh, um, ventilation factor, A times the square root of uh, height. And this does not depend on the fuel. It does not depend on, uh, on. You can write down the energy equation and the balance equation, and it does not come out. Uh, and this is the, the factor 0.1 is one quarter for, 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 the, for the corridor. Again. I mean, I don't, uh, I, uh, this needs more verification. There is only a few data. And finally, the excess pyrolyzate uh, is uh, given by this uh, relation. And this is what puzzles me. If the stoichiometric relation is less than 5, there is no excess pyrolyzate. All burns inside. This, this is, I mean, some, someone has to, we try to, to do some experiment now using uh, diluted fuel with nitrogen to see whether this happens. So. This is, and this gives the, what uh, the heat release rate inside, the excess pyrolyzate, and the other equations are the same. The final thing, ah, now is there an explanation? I don't have an explanation, but it's more hand waving explanation. Uh, what, what I think uh, happens is that there may be um, uh, extinction of radiation from the top layer due to the fuel that is uh, to, uh, uh, near the surface, and. Uh, the fuel concentration inside the enclosure uh, is given by this concentration, by this relation. Is the, the heat, uh, if, the, if, if Q dot dot prime is the heat flux from the flames, and uh, AF is the fuel uh, area, divided by the heat pyrolysis gives the pyrolysis rate. Divided by the air that comes in gives the, the how much fuel uh, exists inside the, the, the enclosure. Now, this concentration of the fuel, if it's near the surface, will absorb radiation for the upper layer. And somehow, this absorption is inversely proportional to this concentration. And if you calculate the mass pyrolysis rate, it comes proportional to the, to the air flow rate. But this is something that uh, it's uh, very important to, uh, and I think it's important to, to take it over. And uh, 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 the last uh, thing uh, is that this affect the effect is not on tremor, the, the coefficient alpha uh, at low pressure, why is less than normal pressure? The, turbul the flow, uh, flow is turbulent again. Is the entrainment rate, the velocity is less? I mean, another explanation may be the fluctuations are different uh, at, uh, at low pressure. And if the fluctuations are different, the flame height uh, can, can also be different. Now, I want to acknowledge that, uh, uh, before I say a little more, uh, the, 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 a lot of people who contributed to the, this work. The EPSRC is the research council in the uh, UK. It's like the National Foundation, Science Foundation. The European program, uh, prog program which uh, we have a number. Uh, my institutions where I worked before, CSRO and, uh, and uh, uh, University of Ulster, and uh, also Factor Mutual, I think it should be here. In the, I think it is somewhere else. Uh, 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 and also the people uh, who did uh, PhD work uh, with uh, us and all postdoc work. And especially the group of Yoshio Miya, two years, Tokyo University of Science in Japan, and Long Kua Hu in SKLFS in China. 
Now, what we did is, uh, is uh, the, 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 the small scale work. And uh, the, the objective is uh, to see how uh, to design uh, uh, facades, uh, facades that are safe. And uh, the, the, the question is what kind of test you, you have to develop to, uh, uh, exa to examine whether a facade uh, uh, design is safe. Now, facades is a complicated system. It's not one wall. There are different layers. There is the uh, outside part of the wall. Uh, there is uh, the insulation, and there is the inside part. And uh, some of the uh, materials may be flammable, uh, and, uh, and uh, there can be serious incidents, like this fire. Uh, most of uh, what I have here is from China, but they have been in other places. Uh, and uh, they can be catastrophic. And, uh, uh, um, uh, and also the fire in Madrid. And this is a test that um, we, 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 we are working now to see how, whether to adopt it or what to do with uh, a, a facade test. And this is the ISO. The large scale test, and you can see an uh, experiment in this, uh, in this test. It's a huge fire, five megawatt fire. It's a natural gas, and uh, this was done in uh, Tokyo University of Science. And this is another view of this. And the, the, the um, test that uh, we may favor is a, a, a simple wall but uh, much bigger than the uh, experiments we did. It's 90 centimeters by 90 centimeters and can be different lengths. And this uh, vertical facade is four meters. And experiments were done in this uh, situation. This is the, the instrumentation. And experiments were done with different kinds of facades. And um, the approach we, we want to, to propose uh, for addressing the flammability of the facade is uh, to measure the key properties of the facade components and uh, uh, the, determine now uh, what kind of exposure you expect uh, the facade uh, uh, will experience based on uh, performance based, based on the room, the fuel load, the fuel arrangement, and so on. And also take into account sprinklers. And then uh, reproduce this uh, fire based on a specific case with a gas burner. It's better to use a gas burner. Measure the heat fluxes with a wall that is inert. And then, having all this information, decide whether a test is needed for the real facade. And the problem is more complicated if the facade is load-bearing. Uh, in that case, uh, you have to, to perform also a fire-resistant test. And I think I will uh, stop here. I mean, the other work we did was with uh, corridor and tunnel fires, but uh, I will uh, stop here and uh, uh, I can entertain your questions. Thank you.